Layla, I know you have family in Palestine. Can you give us an update about how they are? Yes. So we are working on evacuating my surviving family members. We managed to raise money for them, which I'm very excited about. Um, the reason why we had to raise money is so the Egyptian government, if you want to cross over the Rafa border, you have to pay a bribe to the Egyptian authorities. Otherwise, they will not let you cross. And so it's at least 5K um, per person. Sometimes it's 10K. And so if you don't have family in the area or money on your own, you're left out of luck. But really, really, like the community at Columbia has like really, really come through for me. Like, a professor I didn't even know, she donated $2,000 to the GoFundMe. And that just, that, that, that was just truly incredible to see. Like the administration might suck, but like we are here for each other and that's what matters. And also too is like, if y'all could just pray for my family, like I'm, I'm nervous about them. Um, I have a really big target on my back. Um, I've had a lot of people go after me. I've been placed on sites like Canary Mission. Um, and I'm worried for the safety of my family. And where are they now, the family that hasn't been evacuated? So they're um, they're sheltering. So they're sheltering at a church. I can't give the specific yeah, location for safety. But yeah, it's just been stressful too. So there's a telecommunications blackout in Gaza right now. So unfortunate, like I, I'm the type, I would love to get updates like, every day, multiple updates per day personally, but it's like updates are kind of few and far between. And that also adds to the stress of the situation. You and your family are in my thoughts. Um, what is uh, the situation with my favorite Columbia professor, Shai Davidai, who is, for people who don't know, he's this totally histrionic, Zionist, social media addict who presents himself as a constant victim and gives these ridiculous speeches, and at the same time is constantly doxing people, trying to get them in trouble, snitching on them. To every parent who sent their kids to Columbia, I want you to know one thing, we cannot protect your child. I'm not saying this as a professor, I'm speaking to you as a dad. We cannot protect your children from pro-terror student organization because the president of Columbia University, of Harvard University, of Stanford, of Berkeley, will not speak out against pro-terror student organizations. 14 U.S. citizens were kidnapped into Gaza with 200 other Israeli, French, German, and other nationalities. And yet the president of the university is giving her support to pro-terror student organizations. My seven-year-old son is a legitimate target of resistance just because he's Israeli. My two-year-old daughter is a legitimate target of resistance. That is what they are selling. You are allowed to murder and kidnap my two-year-old daughter in the name of resistance. And none of the presidents of universities all around the country are willing to take a stand. This is what cowards do. We are waiting for you to eradicate all pro terror student organizations from campus. Last week, we had thousands of students chanting pro terror songs that are sung right now in Iraq, in Libya, in Yemen, in Afghanistan. They were singing this not in Gaza, not in Afghanistan, here in New York City. And this is the school that you want to send your children to. They were celebrating the rape of teenage girls in a music festival in the name of resistance. The president of the university is allowing these pro-terror student organizations to march on our campuses. Rape is never okay, not as an act of resistance, not as an act of revenge. If my amazing two-year-old daughter was now 18 years old, I would never, never send her to Columbia. Not because it's not a great institution, but because I know that she will not be protected there. We would never allow the KKK to march on our campus. We would never allow a pro-ISIS demonstration on our campus. President Minouche Shafiq of Columbia University, you 
are a coward. I want to highlight that he was at an unauthorized protest on Thursday. Uh oh. Hello, Columbia. Hello, yeah. <laughs> administration. But Layla does have a great update to share. Some students have launched a petition to take action against him. I'm going to send that um, to you so you can share it. But um, yeah, it's been challenging to deal with. Um, he's gone after me multiple times. Um, I have him blocked. I have his wife blocked. He probably follows me with like several burner accounts. He's probably watching this right now, which if you are, hey, shy. Hey, um, shy. Hey, shy. How's it going? How's it going? Um, but yeah, it's just, it's honestly really creepy. Like this man is, I think he's in his forties. I'm not, I'm not even sure, but this man like has his post notifications on for me. Like he is, he, he watches what I do more than like my own parents, which is honestly creepy. It's honestly frustrating that Columbia hasn't really done anything about it. So that's why we're taking this public. We're just like, you can't, you can't treat students like this. I mean, I, I even told him, I was like, please leave me alone. Like, I lost family members. Like, please leave me alone. Um, and yeah, like he guys need to harass me. And his wife is getting in on this, too? Yes, his wife is in on it, too. What does she do? Um, so she promotes, like, tweets, links, um, whatever, to different WhatsApp groups and um, says that we are being anti-Semitic, that we are Jew haters. And I've always, like, I'm, I was like, how, how are you, where are you getting that from? Like, what's going on here? Um, she also posts her stuff um, in different Facebook groups. She goes around and she defends him. So it's not just him. It's like, a, right. it's like a duo. Wow, that's really gross. Well, here, um, Stop Arab Hate posted a video of Davidai, um, but also someone named David Letterer, who's a student at Columbia. There's a video of him with Shai Davidai and he's calling pro-Palestinian students terrorists. Yeah. But, There's a good group of them that do that. Yeah, right. You probably can't keep track, right? But I thought this was interesting because I'm going to show this because here they are and you're going to see Shai Davidai who talks about how unsafe he feels, right? And how um, scared he is to be on campus and how much anti-Semitism and hate there is. And Tell me if you think he looks very scared in this video. He's not the one with the megaphone, but you'll see him. He, he throws up a peace sign. Terrorists go home. 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 That's shy. Look at how scared he looks on this on this campus full of anti-Semitism and, and hate. And, he can, you know, he talks about how he's targeted. That's what it's like living in such a hateful environment that you're smiling while throwing the peace sign up. He doesn't look like he's afraid for his life. He looks like he's having a fine time. Yeah, he was at that protest. He was actually like going up and harassing people too, like going up, calling people terrorist supporters and just all kinds of stuff. But really, it's like, I don't want to give him any more attention. I know, right. I He's feel like he's so annoying, but yeah, you're right. He loves the attention. He does really, love the attention. Doing, it, yeah, really what we're doing is for the people of Palestine and to end the genocide that's going on in Gaza. People can say what they want to say, but at the end of the day, we know that we're doing the right thing, and that's what matters. Firmware says uh, they're panicking. It's a good sign. And Billy Clifton says, like Renee, the first guest, I protested Vietnam War. I have great love for the activists today supporting Palestine. So. Oh, that's so sweet. You just said, Layla, when I was kind of mocking Chai Davidai, that this is really about Palestinians. So I just wanted to give you the last word to tell us about what your family in Palestine has experienced and what they've told you about their experience, or let us know anything that you know from your family that you want this audience to know about. Yeah. So I know that a lot of people have seen different images coming out of Palestine. There's been a lot of really gruesome images, especially with the um, Al-Shifa hospital massacre. But the reality is that pictures do not do it justice. It is so much worse than you can imagine. Um, the air smells like dead bodies. There are dead bodies everywhere you go. And it's something that is, it's something that's heartbreaking to witness. And I also think too, it's like, we all have a moral obligation to speak up against this. Over 33,000 Palestinians are dead. 
And that is estimated to be a severe undercount. That yeah. doesn't account for the over 100,000 Palestinians that have been injured. That doesn't account for the thousands that are trapped under the rubble or the millions that are displaced. This and trapped under the rubble. And also, um, I mean, the fact that they can't get them out because yeah. they don't have the equipment to do it because the fuel isn't let in. I mean, it's just like atrocity it, on top of atrocity. Yes. Like they're literally, they're digging, like they don't, people are digging with their hands. With their hands. It's awful. And it's like, nobody should ever have to live like this. I don't want anybody to have to live like this. And really, like, if you have not spoken out about Palestine, if you have not um, donated to organizations like the Palestine Children's Relief Fund or um, UNRWA, now is your time. Um, we really do need all the support that we can get. And just your support, it means a lot. Thank you for talking about this, giving us a platform mm -hmm. to speak about our experiences are at Columbia and how we can connect it to a larger scale in Gaza as well.